Hello everyone, Shroom Rover here, and today I'm really excited to finally be bringing you my team builder analysis video for the very final match of PPL, the Pokemon Premier League, Season 2. Yes, indeed, it has been a wonderful season. Uh, the regular season stuff, that's all finished now. Um, and who's in Division 1, who's in Division 2, that's been decided. As you know, we did manage to come out victorious this season, which is absolutely fantastic. So, one more game to go. This is the aptly dubbed Community Shield on, and what this is, is the uh, victorious team in Division 1 taking on the victorious team in Division 2 in this kind of cup match going on. And this is going to be a really good game. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, because our opponent is someone we played last season, and that is none other than Troy, aka the Trojan Horsey, and his team, Wicombi Wanderers. Yep, this is going to be fantastic. Um, Troy is an excellent player. Um, the only reason he's in Division 2 is because he volunteered to go down there um, to kind of, you know, oversee things there, given that it was the first time we had Division 2. That's sort of run things a little bit. And he performed admirably. You know, he finished the season on 9 and 2. Same result as us. But um, his uh, KOs for and against came down to 57 4, 37 against, which means he had by far and away the best defensive record out of the two divisions. Um, so he's a very, very worthy opponent. He's a fantastic player. Very much deserving of his next season spot back up in Division 1, where he pretty much belongs. Um, and yeah, he's, he's a very, very powerful opponent uh, with a very good team. So without further ado, let's take a really quick look at the team that he can pick from. So Troy's team is as follows. Entei, Latias, Amoongus, Florges, Sloking, Lucario, Gliscor, Honchkrow, and Raichu. This is a very tough team. Uh, there are a lot of aspects to this that are very threatening. Uh, Amoongus and Slowking, for one thing, that is the regen core from hell. Very difficult to deal with. He's used it very effectively, along with the likes of Florges as well. Um, you know, mi mixing nicely with Amoongus, with, uh, with, with, uh, Amoongus and Slowking. Uh, Entei, he had this last season. It, I had to gimmick the hell out of Entei last season. Um, he's also got one of the best defoggers going in the form of Latias. Gliscor is just a problem to deal with. Honchkrow is terrifying. Raichu is his only mon that cost below 10 million. That shows the quality in his team. And Lucario. What do I say about Lucario? Lucario is one of those mons that just runs through my team. You know, I have one of my own against his team, which I'll come on to later, but Lucario really can destroy my team. You know, my walling core is weak. My, my main walling core is very weak to fighting and steel. So Lucario is going to be a huge issue for me. Um, and what makes Troy's team and his performance this season all the more impressive is he has not made a single trade or transfer this season. His team has stayed uniform throughout the entire competition, which is impressive. You know, it shows his ability to draft excellently and not need to switch things up. It also means he's very comfortable with his team by now, which is a scary thing to have to deal with. Uh, we ourselves have only made one transfer, uh, which didn't really come into, into play at all. You know, we may as well have started how we finished the season. We never use poor old fur fruit, but that's a story for another time. <clears throat> so, Troy's team versus my team. There are interesting matchups, as I said, we've both got some ones that can do a lot of work against each other. But when it comes to dealing with his team, if I run defensive, I'm going to lose. And I'll tell you for why. Um, his core of Amoongus and, Flo and, and Slowking, their recovery is just better than mine. My main ones are Ordino and Umbreon, and their forms of recovery are most likely going to be Wish which is not as good as just the ability to switch out. You know, the regen core of Amoongus and Sloking, if there's a problem and they're at low health, they can switch out and they don't have to even take any risks, damage, anything. I have to set up a wish, I have to protect, I have to try and pass it on, it's a nightmare. Add to that the fact he's got his own good wish path in the form of Florges, uh, which acts as a very nice cleric as well. This is not going to be an easy game. Not in the slightest. Um, and as I say, if I go with this more defensive wish pass route, which is what I've been playing for most of the season, I'm not going to win. So, with that in mind, and the fact that this game is not based on differential, 
I'm bringing the pain. I am bringing the power. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the team I'll be bringing against him. As I've said, I'm going to be bringing the power because if I go wish, pass, protect, all this kind of shenanigans, I'm not going to win. He's got the better sort of chance with that, with his regen, his one wish passer, and his very powerful threats. With that in mind, the first member of my team to take on the Trojan Horsey and the Wicombi Wanderers is going to be Victini. Lil Dunn is captaining the team once again. Um, it's a very standard kind of set that I've been running with, with the Colberberry, moves of choice, v crate, Bolt Strike, U-Turn and Toxic. 76 in HP, max attack, 180 in speed, jolly nature. So, what is this allowing me to do? Well, that 180 speed with a positive nature, that's allowing me to outspeed an Adam and Entei. Um, which I'm kind of expecting, you know, um, he's got a lot of priority going on in his team and it serves him very well. Extreme speed on the likes of a Bandit Entei, that can put in a lot of work. So I want to be outspeeding him. It's also the reason I don't want to be choiced and I've got Toxic. Um, <clears throat> as I've mentioned a few games uh, this season, uh, sometimes fire versus fire is a very difficult matchup to have, especially when they're all very offensive based. So packing Toxic on Victini for the likes of Entei, Arcanine as well, uh, other various semi-bulky uh, fire types that can put in the work. Toxic very nice on that. U-turn, there for the initiative, obviously. V-Crate and Bolt Strike, they're the main forms of clickbait. Um, you know, uh, Bolt Strike, that's going to be nice for hitting the likes of Sloking, uh, Haunch Crow as well. Um, V-Crate is the main form of clickbait. U-turn, if the Latias is a problem, I can just get on out of there. <clears throat> and as I say, Toxic, the likes of Entei, onto the Latias will be nice as well. Same with Sloking. Um, and the Forges, I'll have to work around that. Uh, because it could be a cleric if he brings it. So that's going to be difficult to deal with. Colberberry is the item. I've loved using Colberberry on Victini this season. And um, the reason I've got it right now instead of, for example, a Scarf set um, is mainly the form of that Lucario. Um, Victini is a nice switch into its two forms of stab. It resists both, I believe. Um, I think Fire resists Steel. It's probably a kind of knowledge I should know. Um, but either way, I'm expecting him to want to be packing coverage for the likes of Victini. And if he's going to be a setup uh, Lucario, which I'm kind of expecting, um, I'm expecting, you know, dual stab. And that third main coverage move, I would expect to be Crunch or Dark Pulse. Now, he could be running Earthquake, but I do have things that Dark Pulse or Crunch would hit a little bit better uh, than an Earthquake. So that's the kind of thing I'm expecting from him. He could be, if he's running special, then, you know, certain Dark Pulse, I'd, I'd more than expect that on the Lucario, but, you know, I outspeed that naturally anyway, so, um, I don't expect him to be staying in against me, unless, for example, he's got, like, an agility up, at which point he might be tempted to go for that Dark-type coverage move, I can take it with the Colber and hit him with a V-Crate and pretty much, hopefully, knock him out and get rid of one of the main threats to my team. So that's the thinking behind Victini. Next on my list is going to be something I very much um, think is going to be a win condition. That's going to be Scyther. Little Sizz is here with a spread that I've been using a lot. Uh, a Violite Technician with Bug Bite, Aerial Ace, Swords Dance and Agility. With 28 in HP, max attack, 4 split between the defences and the remaining 220 they're going into speed again with a jolly nature. Um, this is, this is fairly sort of standardish stuff going on here with Scyther. Um, uh, it hits 168 in speed. That is allowing me to outpace uh, his base 100, which is, I believe, just Entei. Um, now, if God forbid he does decide to bring sort of jolly Entei, uh, then we can outspeed that, and that's absolutely fine. <coughs> Scyther. The thing about Scyther is that if I can get a Swords Dance up, get that plus two, I Oko six of his Pokemon. That being Latias with, with Bug Bite, Amoongus with Aerial Ace, Slowking with Bug Bite, Lucario with Aerial Ace, Honchcrow with Aerial Ace, and Raichu with Bug Bite. After Rocks, if he's an offensive Entei, I believe Aerial Ace can take that out. Um, the Forgers, that's a bit more of an issue, but it's not going to be tanking hits far too well at plus two. Uh, similar kind of thing with Gliscor. Uh, Gliscor is probably going to be his best bet against this. Once again, I'm packing Swords Dance and Agility. Once again, I don't expect to have the opportunity to sell both of them. But, with Bug Bite and Aerial Ace being pretty much my best option all around, uh, I mean, I could be packing Steel Wing for the Forgers, but to be honest, it's probably a two-hit KO either way with either move, so what's the point? 
And as I've been doing a lot with my double dancers this season, better to have the opportunity just in case God forbid I get the chance to set it up, which will just serve me better than having a move that I probably won't end up using anyway. So Scyther is pretty much a win condition for me, I can see this thing hopefully being some kind of late game sweeper before I can get damage again on the likes of the Glyscore, maybe the Entei, get those rocks up and we should be looking in a good position. So third member of the team is going to be Sandslash. I've brought in a defensive build of Sandslash, very standard stuff uh, with the leftovers, Sandrush is the ability, doesn't matter in the, in the slightest what Sandslash's ability is. We've got Earthquake, Knockoff, Rapid Spin, Stealth Rock, Max HP, 8 in Attack, 248 into Defense uh, with that impish nature. Now, uh, Sandslash is pretty much my only defensive mod. As I said, going defensive is not going to work, so I'm bringing the power, I'm bringing the pain, I'm not bringing a lot of defensive stuff. So Sandslash is pretty much my only one. Um, Sandslash's main job here is just to keep rocks up and keep them off my side. That's pretty much all I want Sandslash to do. I've got a U-turning Victini, I've got a Scyther who's quad weak, and as you see a bit later, I've got another one that does not want to take rocks damage. So Sandslash is going to be very important to make sure that he can't get rocks up on my side. The good thing about that is he's only got one rock setter in the form of Gliscor, and that's his only form of hazards. So hopefully, and I'm expecting to bring the Gliscor, but hopefully I'll be able to accomplish that because at the very least, while Sandslash may not be able to 1v1 Gliscor, it can certainly make damn sure that there are no rocks up on my side of the field by the time it goes down. Earthquake is just its standard kind of move. Knockoff, that's going to be hitting the Latias. It'd be nice to get rid of items on his walls. Amoongus, Florges, Slow King will be hit quite hard with a knockoff too. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with Sandslash. Of course, if I can get a knockoff onto a switch into Gliscor, get rid of a potential Toxic Orb, That'll be good as well. Uh, but yeah, Sandslash is pretty much just here for hazard control. So, who is going to be the fourth member of the team? Well, you will probably have been expecting me to bring this guy, because fourth on the team is going to be Tyrantrum. Blue Lines is back, and my my are we bringing the pain here. We have got a Life Orb Tyrantrum, with Rockhead as the ability, Head Smash, Earthquake, Sub, Dragon Dance, Max Attack, Max speed, four in special defense, third jolly natured member of the team. It's 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 time for pain. We're bringing the pain train. Tyrantrum is here and is looking to cause a massive problem to his team. Um, life orb with sub. Obviously, that's not necessarily the most optimum kind of setup to go with, but I just want power on power. Uh, so sub dragon dance. There are a couple of things that I can set this up on. He's choice locked with Entei into the likes of uh, Flare Blitz or what's it called, Sacred Fire. Um, I can set up a sub on that. I can also hopefully set one up on Anamungus if he's trying to go for Spore. Um, similar kind of thing with uh, a Raichu if it's locked into an unfavorable move like Thunderbolt. I can hopefully set up a sub on that too. Um, and then get a Dragon Dance up and just start hitting things really hard. Now, if he's brought a Scarf Latias, it's going to take me two Dragon Dances to outspeed it. But other than that, at plus one, I'm looking really good. A lot of his priority is extreme speed. Um, admittedly, Vacuum Wave or Bullet Punch from Lucario will be causing me a bit of a headache. Not so much the Bullet Punch, uh, because that's not doing over half. Um, vacuum Wave, that might be a bit more of a problem, especially if he's got like a nasty plot up. But... I'm rather hoping that he'll have to bring that in as contingency to break my sub, or at least sack something before he does so, and maybe I'll have Victini at good health to switch in. But Tyrantrum at plus one with a life orb, head smash is just decimating so many things. Ironically enough, the thing he's got to take a hit best from this, head smash wise, is that Lucario, and it's doing like 45%, and I have Earthquake as the coverage. So this guy can really do a number on him. It's one of my two main sweeping Pokemon. The other one, of course, being Scyther. And I'm hoping that one or both of them can really put in the work against Troy. So fifth up, we're going to have Thunderous Incarnate. Thunderous Bohemian is here with an expert belt this time. Uh, Define as the ability, and I'll come on to that in a little bit. Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Hidden Power Ice, and Flash Cannon. Four in HP, max special attack, max speed, timid. Now, uh, of course, when you're going with a full four move special attacking Thunderous, neither of its abilities are actually going to be any good. Um, so my feeling is, no point running Prankster, I'm never going to get a chance to use it. The only thing Defiant might have is if 
If he lowers one of my stats on Thunderous, I'll get the attack boost and try and lull him into this sense of it's mixed or it's physically offensive. That's pretty much the only thing that an ability can do for Thunderous this game. But other than that, the moveset is fairly standard. You know, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, they're standard stuff on Thunderous. Hidden Power, Ice, similar thing. Gonna be hitting the Glide Score for big damage, Amoongus too. Um, Flash Cannon, pretty much just there for the Flaugers. My team doesn't have all that much to deal with Flaugers other than just raw power. Uh, so Flash Cannon can at least do the damage there. Expert Belt over Life Orb, um, because I don't want the recoil damage. And this is that mod I was talking about earlier that doesn't want to be switching in too much on rocks. So, you know, any help with that is going to be fine. And to be honest, Expert Belt's giving it pretty much the boost it needs. It can hit everything, I think, for super effective damage. Other than Entei, um, who is fairly bulky, but hopefully I have things for. Latias is here, Amoongus 2, Flaugers, Sloking, obviously. Lucario is not hit for super effective, but Thunderous is powerful enough to dent it. Glyscore, of course, hit. Honchkrow hit, and Raichu will go down to a lot of hits. You know, Hidden Power Ice is still going to be doing a decent chunk. Uh, not as much as I'd like, it's probably not even a 2-hit KO, but Raichu's fairly frail, and hopefully I'll have things to deal with the Raichu. So, that is enough on Thunderous, so we'll move on to the final member of my team, and that is going to be Miss Magus. Something of the misfit of the team hasn't really been doing as well as I would like, and that's mainly been my fault. I think it started the season well, um, but sort of ended badly when I was using gimmicks, but that's a story for my summation video, which will be coming out sometime in the future. We've gone back to proper offensive Miss Magus. We've got a Focus Sash set with Shadow Ball, Mystical Fire, Icy Wind and Taunt, Max Special Attack, 4 in Defense, Special Defense that is, Max Speed, Modest. This guy here, Sorting Hat, is pretty much going to be my lead, uh, whatever happens. Its moveset is looking pretty good to deal good damage to anything that he can bring. The Entei is bulky enough to take any two hits from this Miss Magus. Latias doesn't want to take a Shadow Ball, you know, um, Amoongus, you've got Mystical Fire. Flaugers can't really do too much offensively. Slow King, of course, I've got Shadow Ball. Lucario's hit by Mystical Fire. Glyscore and Honchkrow, they take an Icy Wind, and Raichu doesn't want to be taking any kind of hit. As I said, the problems here are really Flaugers can tank any hit from this guy, uh, which is kind of why I have Torn. Uh, Torn is also nice as a lead off against potential rocks on Gliscor and a potential Trick Room on the Slow King, which I'm kind of sort of maybe expecting a little bit. But obviously, Miss Majors can take any one hit on any, you know, from any lead with the Sash, try and fire off something quite powerful. What's nice is that I can afford to run a Modest Nature, because if I run Modest, I can still outspeed a Jolly slash Timid Max Speed Lucario by one point, which is really nice. Uh, it just means I can get that extra bit of power on Miss Major so I can run properly offensive for the first time in a long time, rather than these gimmicky sets that I've been trying and failing to get to work. Another nice thing about Miss Magus is that it's immune to a lot of the priority he is packing. Entei's um, Extreme Speed, uh, Lucario's, two of Lucario's best options are Extreme Speed and Vacuum Wave. I'm obviously immune to them. Bullet Punch hopefully won't be doing an inordinate amount. The only thing I really have to worry about priority-wise is the Haunch Crow with the Sucker Punch. Um, that could be a wee bit of an issue. Uh, but yeah, the likes of Fake Out Raichu, not taking any from that because I'm a ghost. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping for Miss Magus to do a nice bit of work. Um, some scouting at the beginning would be nice, taunt what I need to, get damage off where I can. This is kind of the focus of, of a few of these, these team members. The likes of Miss Magus, um, Thunderous and Victini, they're there to kind of get the chip damage where I can, and because it's a very offensive team, I can get big chip damage where I can. Sandslash, the Hazard Control, and then we've got Scyther, and we've got Tyrantrum to come in and do the heavy lifting at the end. So. That is the thought process behind the team. As I say, it's chip damage, it's hazard control, and it's heavy hitting setup at the end. That's basically the thought process. It's hyper offense with a sand slash. <laughs> because as I've said, this game is not about maintaining differential. This is just about winning and losing. Um, it, it's not within the league. You know, this doesn't matter for differential. It doesn't matter for table position. This is just for honor. And you know, Troy's going to be out to get this one. You know, he deserves to be in Division One. He knows that. Um, so he's going to be out to try and see if he can beat me. Obviously last season I did manage to beat him, so there's going to be that aspect um, coming into it as well, where he's going to try and want to try and get back at me for that, I imagine, and I, I welcome the challenge. It's going to be a fantastic game. But it's going to be going up probably, I would say, tomorrow, um, as of when this one goes up. 
uh, this one will probably be going up, let's see what day is it, um, this will probably be going up on Thursday, so I imagine the battle might go up Friday slash Saturday, uh, with my sort of overarching summary of the season going up on the Sunday, that's kind of the, the aim for me at this point, that's my short term schedule as far as finishing off the season goes, but that is going to be it from me, so Thank you all very much for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed. Make sure to head down into the description to check out links to the PPL Twitter and YouTube. Um, some big news about next season has gone up of late, so make sure you head there to check out those links. Also, of course, links to Troy, the Trojan Horsey. His Twitter and YouTube will be down there as well. He is a fantastic person, very good friend. Um, he does a lot for the community. Um, in with his sort of PokeTuber Spotlight kind of deal. He's also playing some other games on his channel as well. His content is of very high quality. It's always good fun. Um, I find him to be a very, very funny and excellent personality just to listen to. Um, and he's got very, very nice insights on many topics that you might want to consider uh, within the community. So make sure you check him out. You're doing yourself a favor. But as I say, I'm going to get on out of here. Make sure to keep your eyes peeled for the battle going up hopefully tomorrow. But yeah. Thank you once again, my final time for watching. And I guess with that, I'll see you next time. Laters.